consciousness seems to be predicated on those things. And yet in movies and things, they'll create AI that kind of recognizes that it might live forever and is fine with that. That is kind of like, well, I, mm -hmm. consciousness is what is important. You don't need a fear of death. You don't need a fear of illness. Right. You don't because need a I childhood. Think, I think a fear of death is a human trait. I think that that is an, uh, an instinct. It's not a human trait. It's a, oh, it's a living it's, trait. It's a, it's, a, it's a trait of biological life exactly. that has participated and in evolution on I Earth. I feel like that's the... Well, just true. Like consciousness is kind of proprietary to humans, in my opinion. There should be a different word for awareness or being awake. Well, we're talking about consciousness, but also we're talking about fear of death. I don't think you have to be conscious to have a fear of death. I, I, think, I think animals like, have fear of deaths. Right? Yeah, yeah, I mean, there's instinctual things. But like, yeah. I, I think they have behavior patterns that help them avoid death. But I, it, would you say that a bacterium has a fear of death? To use the word fear to apply to a unicellular organism, they do have behavior based on chemotaxis and things like that that help them evade death. But I wouldn't char characterize it as fear. It's evading death. I think that's, you know, a more basic way of saying it. But one way is ascribing it a pattern of behavior. The other is ascribing it a true emotion. And I well, think those are very different things. Maybe let's just go to the basic level and say it's going to avoid death. Sure. Right. So I, what, what I would think would happen, a very possible way that we create artificial intelligence, is if somebody out there is able to, via software, create this basic, um, this basic piece of software that emulates how life evolves. Mm -hmm. You know, I would, I would think there's a very, very big possibility that somebody out there figures out how to make a little piece of software that replicates itself, that changes itself every replication, much like, you know, DNA um, has certain amount of errors every time it replicates. And that function that allowed DNA over time to, to slowly evolve based on its surroundings, whatever worked out, you know, is able to re reproduce the most is the thing that, that survives the most. I think that is a basic pro uh, process of the universe, basically. Whatever mm -hmm. is able to survive and replicate the most is what's going to survive. And Natural um, selection natural applied selection. to exactly. Mm -hmm. I think if someone created a program that can replicate, you know, like a, like a computer virus type thing, but is able to change itself in a random way, and something, most of the changes make it not work anymore, but some changes might actually help it to evade you know virus protection or something like that mm. and using that process it's no longer us programming something it's something through sheer natural selection uh creating traits that enable it to survive longer mm -hmm. and that's i think the simple a simple law of the universe and if we yeah if we happen to make something like that that's its only purpose is to is to survive so then on the pro and the con side, I guess maybe this is a good point to have like, so software or something, I think, you know, you initiate a consciousness point to uh, a synthetic and then it is, it's now sentient to a certain degree and it can replicate itself. It can learn. It can figure it just as you would expect something to like, it's constantly growing and evolving and developing memories. At some point it's going to, why one why would it see us as a threat right and two why do we always assume that it's going to destroy us or is that our natural well, primitive human there's no need for an uprising if we are not causing them any suffering right My, the worst case scenario is they go oh yeah humans all right we're going to do our own thing right mm -hmm. <laughs> you guys are you guys are fine well my answer to that right there is why would we consider another country to be a threat mm -hmm. there are humans why would we ever be afraid of them yeah. well because and that's because they have free will. They can do whatever they want. And sometimes that's scary. You know, but you we know at, what humans are and we know what humans can do, right? But yeah, ideologies, but, I mean, robots, with a, we always picture them as being very binary. It's, it's, it's very easy to make decisions because it's yes or no. Mm -hmm. And if they see like, oh, this is how planet Earth should be, no matter what we code into them, if they're able to objectively look at the planet and go, they should not be here, then would they... I, I mean, guess my that, question is what could possibly drive them to make that conclusion, I wonder. Our violence toward one another, I mean, you know, mm -hmm. our, our littering, our just destruction of the planet, I think robots could look at that and be like, oh, they, we, we should pen them up. I think they'll just solve all our problems for us <laughs> instead. Well, I think, I think this whole discussion uh, revolves around like, 
how did we program them to get that way? Because I think you guys are viewing it as if like we decided to sit down and create something to create a robot with you know consciousness. We're like, here we, we're gonna let, we're gonna give you all these you know the intellect mm-hmm. and the ability to to think for yourself. Um, but did we set it free to think whatever it wants? But or above are we a certain it? above a certain level of computing power, which is greater than the computing power of the brain, or even billions of times greater, it's going to have some sort of consciousness. Right? Did we program in restrictions to that? I guess that's my that's my question. I think mm-hmm. that's something we might want to think of moving forwards. I think I think wasn't that what Eli Musk was talking about? Like maybe we should we should get together and sort of figure out a couple you know like a a, a plan for the rules well, of robotics I mean, to, like yeah. Asimov. to address yeah. yeah like asimov's thing or like yeah. you know to go back to what you were saying the threat to us uh that people are, are worried about or like not necessarily as another country or just a different entity but is the jobs like you talked about ryan like if they take away all manufacturing jobs and then all bagging jobs and then cleaning jobs and virtually uh, the thing that keeps our worldwide our infrastructure kind of intact all of those jobs are gone people are gonna there will be an uprising there'll be violence towards